The coronation of Napoleon as Emperor of the French took place on Sunday, December 2, 1804 at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. It marked the instantiation of modern empire, and was a transparently masterminded piece of modern propaganda. Napoleon wanted to establish legitimacy of his imperial reign, with its new royal family and new nobility. Therefore, he designed a new coronation ceremony that was unlike the ceremony used for the kings of France. In the traditional coronation, kings underwent a ceremony of consecration rather than a coronation. In consecration, anointment was conferred by the Archbishop of Reims in Notre Dame de Reims. Napoleon's was a sacred ceremony held in the Great Cathedral in the presence of the Pope Pius VII. Napoleon brought together an assortment of different rites and customs, incorporating aspects of Carolingian tradition, the ancient regime and the French Revolution, all presented in sumptuous luxury. According to government tallies, the entire cost was over 8.5 million francs. On May 18, 1804, the Senate Conservateur vested the Republican government of the French First Republic in an emperor, and preparations for a coronation followed. Napoleon's elevation to emperor was overwhelmingly approved by the French citizens in the French constitutional referendum of 1804. Among Napoleon's motivations for being crowned were to gain prestige in international royalist and Catholic milieu and to lay the foundation for a future dynasty. Preparations Not wanting to be an old regime monarch, Napoleon explained, to be a king is to inherit old ideas and genealogy. I don't want to descend from anyone. According to Louis Constant Wiry, Napoleon awoke at 8 a.m. To the sound of a cannonade, he left the Tuileries at 11 a.m. in a white velvet vest with gold embroidery and diamond buttons, a crimson velvet tunic and a short crimson coat with satin lining. He wore a wreath of laurel. The number of onlookers, as estimated by Wiry, was between four and five thousand, many of whom had held their places all night. Through intermittent showers that cleared in the morning, the ceremony, the ceremony had started at 9 a.m., when the papal procession set out from the Tuileries. The procession was led by a bishop on a mule holding aloft the papal crucifix. The Pope entered Notre Dame first, to the anthem 2S Petrus, and took his seat on a throne near the high altar. Napoleon's and Josephine's carriage was drawn by eight bay horses and escorted by grenadiers a cheval and gendarmes delight. The two-part ceremony was held at different ends of Notre Dame to emphasize the disconnectedness of religious and secular facets. An unmanned balloon, ablaze with 3,000 lights in an imperial crown pattern, was launched from the front of Notre Dame during the celebration. Before entering Notre Dame, Napoleon was vested in a long white satin tunic embroidered in gold thread and Josephine similarly wore a white satin empire-style dress embroidered in gold thread. During the coronation, he was formally clothed in a heavy coronation mantle, made from crimson velvet and lined with ermine. The velvet was covered with embroidered golden bees, drawn from the golden bees among the regalia that had been discovered in the Merovingian tomb of Childeric I, a symbol that looked beyond the Bourbon past and linked the new dynasty with the ancient Merovingians. The bee replaced the fleur de lis on imperial tapestries and garments. The mantle weighed at least 80 pounds and was supported by four dignitaries. Josephine was at the same time formally clothed in a similar crimson velvet mantle embroidered with bees in gold thread and lined with ermine, which was borne by Napoleon's three sisters. There were two orchestras with four choruses, numerous military bands playing heroic marches, and over 300 musicians. A 400-voice choir performed Paisiolos, Mass, and Te Deum. Because the traditional royal crown had been destroyed during the French Revolution, the so-called Crown of Napoleon, made to look medieval and called the Crown of Charlemagne Main, for the occasion, was waiting on the altar. While the crown was new, the scepter was reputed to have belonged to Charles V and the sword to Philip III. 
the coronation proper began with the singing of the hymn, Veni Creator Spiritus, followed by the versicle, Lord, send forth your spirit, and response, and renew the face of the earth, and the collect for the feast of Pentecost, God who has taught the hearts of your faithful by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. After this the prayer, Almighty, everlasting God, the Creator of all, during the litany of the saints, the Emperor and Empress remained seated, only kneeling for special petitions. The Emperor and Empress were both anointed on their heads and on both hands with chrism, the Emperor with the prayers, God, the Son of God, and God who let Hazel triumph over the Syrians, the Empress with the prayer, God the Father of eternal glory, while the antiphon, Zadok the priest, was sung. The Mass then began. At Napoleon's request the collect of the Blessed Virgin was said in place of the proper collect for the day. After the epistle the different articles of the imperial regalia were individually blessed and delivered to the Emperor and Empress. At the moment of the crowning when the Pope said, Receive the imperial crown, Napoleon unexpectedly turned in, forestalling the Pope, removed his laurel wreath and crowned himself and then crowned the kneeling Josephine with a small crown surmounted by a cross, which he had first placed on his own head. At Napoleon's enthronement a Pope said, May God confirm you on this throne and may Christ give you to rule with him in his eternal kingdom. Limited in his actions, Pius VII proclaimed further the Latin formula vivat imperator in eternum, which was echoed by the full choirs in a vivat, followed by te diem. With his hands on the Bible, Napoleon took the oath, I swear to maintain the integrity of the territory of the Republic to respect and enforce respect for the concordat and freedom of religion, equality of rights, political and civil liberty, the irrevocability of the sale of national lands, not to raise any tax except in virtue of the law, to maintain the institution of legion of honor, and to govern in the sole interest happiness and glory of the French people. The text was presented to Napoleon by the President of the Senate, the President of Legislature and the Mosai President of the Council of State. After the oath the newly appointed Herald of Arms proclaimed loudly, the thrice glorious and thrice august Emperor Napoleon is crowned and enthroned. Long live the Emperor! During the people's acclamations Napoleon, surrounded by dignitaries, left the cathedral while the choir sang, Domini Salvum F.A.C. Imperatorum Nostrum Napoleon M. God save our Emperor Napoleon. After the coronation the Emperor presented the imperial standards to each of his regiments. In addition to David's paintings, a commemorative medal was struck with the reverse design by Antoine Denis Chaudet.